in comparison to like a specialist, say a, a physiologist, for argument's sake, like we still need these specialists. Mm. Um, you know, a, a high performing environment in sport or, or anywhere in, in, in the PLC world, it's an amalgamation of generalists and specialists, isn't it? And ultimately over time, a generalist might start to specialize in a particular area. And likewise, a specialist might develop a more general set of skills depending on the opportunities that, that present themselves. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Working in Sport podcast. My name is James Gibson, and today we're joined by Daniel Farmer. Daniel Farmer is a performance advisor for Sport Wales. He also is the head coach and founder of RAS, a bespoke coaching service primarily for endurance athletes. Daniel has been working with Sport Wales for the last four years. Prior to that, an extensive history throughout golf and uh, has done his studies, both masters and bachelors, across the United Kingdom. We're going to get into all of that and more. But Daniel, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. No, thanks, James. Uh, appreciate the invite and uh, looking forward to, to having the conversation. That's great, mate. Uh, it's good to have you on. So the, the role as a performance advisor in, in Sport Wales, do you mind just clarifying that a, a, a little bit further for, for those that, you know, is it sort of more in the coaching realm? Are you doing much coaching in that role or is it something sort of a bit more sort of uh, administrative supportive? Uh, take us through the journey um, or, or the day-to-day -day of a performance advisor at Sport Wales. So it's, I guess, very much a strategic role. Um, there's two of us who, um, two performance advisors here at Sport Wales, and um, we haven't got a specific portfolio, but broadly we work across national governing bodies, key partners, local authorities, et cetera, um, looking at principles of athlete development, um, performance programs, and what can we do to, to be better in that space? And where can we best support those governing bodies, those partners based on our internal expertise and competencies and really find some common purpose in where we can develop the system. Um, typically work alongside say performance directors, director of performances, head coaches or pathway managers. Um, they, they would be our typical connections into the sports and look to develop strong relationships with them. I mean, very honest, trustworthy relationships. And as I said, really find those spaces where we can collaborate um, and help drive kind of athlete development here in Wales. Perfect. And the, the role itself, I'm going to get into history in, in just a moment, but the role itself, was that ever something you envisioned yourself doing? I don't think so, actually. Um, my ambition, and it's still my ambition, is that performance director role. Yep. Within a, within a specific sport. Um, and I guess the experience I've had to date, which, which we'll briefly touch upon, um, I think this gives it, will provide me with a, with a set of skills and experiences that will, I hope one day, um, be the, the kind of catalyst to go into a, a performance director role because I've got a very broad um, sort of working environment um, across lots of sports with lots of different people but with very common goals mm -hmm. um, so I think there's lots to learn um, many ways in which you can contribute um, and, and I said I, I mean I love it I love the role. It probably wasn't something I, I'd envisaged, but probably didn't envisage because I didn't know it existed. Um, would have been one of those, one of those key components of that. Yeah, I, I, I'm much the same. And, and from some of the people that I've spoken to as well, I've, I've noticed some similarities. And like, I think for a lot of us, we watch sport on the telly when we're younger and we go, cool, I want to work. I, I, I want to work for 
uh, Man City or Man United, or I want to work for this team or that team, or I want to be at the Olympics and go to the Olympics. Um, probably first and foremost as athletes, um, but once we <laughs> realise that dream and have a you know a big injury that means that we couldn't make it, and that's the reason why and the only reason why we couldn't make it. Uh, yeah, we sort of transition our, our mindset to be able to work in in, in sport, um, and it's certainly interesting to see that that was sort of your your journey as well. So like never never necessarily something that you thought you'd gravitate towards, but that passion for sport and love for sport led you to where you are, and that's sort of um, I, I look at what you've done. And it seems like you're somebody that I guess it's always the purpose of me doing these interviews is we all love sport and we all want to work in sport and how people get there is always so interesting and so fascinating. It's not like a a physio or a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher where it's like these are the steps you need to follow. It's so varied. And I look at yours and I see a lot of work in golf you know, through um, the time with with Golf Wales, um, even some experience that you have with the Ryder Cup and even working down in Tasmania in Australia of, of all places in golf. So I take it that you're a fan of golf and that you <laughs> and that you love golf. And but what I like the most about your journey is sort of weaving in employment opportunities within your passion. So your passion, you know, obviously having a passion in golf and we'll get to your endurance passions as well in a minute. But uh, talk me through sort of your your mindset when you were thinking about you know, starting certain roles in sport or within golf. Were, were you thinking, look, I just want to work in this environment and I'll figure out the rest but once I get there? I mean, it's, it's fascinating because I can resonate with so, so much of what you've said there and other people's journeys um, and their experiences in terms of who you've had on the podcast previously. I mean, I've got to be honest, growing up in sort of deepest West Wales, I had no idea of the sporting ecosystem that existed um, in terms of governing bodies, administrative roles, national organisations, Olympic committees, sports science and medicine, everything that that, that is associated with that. Um, but I was a keen golfer a half decent golfer as as we all were in our in our respective sports um and it Could've was kind it. of like in that, <laughs> in that world in in golf you either turn professional and coach and run a pro shop at a club or you go into golf course management or if you're good enough you, you can tour the world and make money from from playing um And it was only through going to Loughborough University. And even then, I'd say a big, a bigger influence was London 2012. So being part of that in a working capacity, that put in the spotlight on the sporting infrastructure that exists in Britain and beyond. I think between those two experiences, that really exposed what opportunities existed and gave me the confidence then to to pursue that, um, I guess, that thirst and that drive to, at some point in my career, be a performance director, but understanding the steps I need to build relevant experiences, knowledge, networks to actually get there. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's those two things uh, that have probably led me to this point. Yeah, it, it, interesting. Um, like it, even sort of looking at your your study history as well, like you, you don't, you wouldn't necessarily, if I look at maybe just the headline of your studies, it's not necessarily something that would be a performance director or at least your bachelor's wouldn't be because, you know, your bachelor's is in computer sciences. But when you look a little bit deeper, it's the technological impacts on golf, <laughs> and then the M- the you know the MBA itself, which is probably you know a bit more aligned with what performance directors would have, is looking at the impacts of a global spectacle like the introduction of golf to the Olympics and the impacts of that on the sport. Um, it's been interesting to see you sort of weave that passion that you have into certain roles and 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 sort of um, like you alluded to and, and mentioned, find your way through the sport and figure out what the next step is going to be. 
you'd mentioned that you didn't necessarily have quite an understanding of those governing bodies and or even even a knowledge like like myself I had no idea about you know the governing bodies that exist in in these sporting landscapes as you began to learn more about it that obviously triggered your sort of your want to be a performance director role did has it was there anything else that when you got into the industry that you realized like, oh, wow, that's that's a role, like I can do that? Was there any sort of other other jobs that you saw coming up and you're like, oh, wow, that's actually, I didn't even know that existed, that's a role, I'd love to do that or I can't believe that's even a job? Yeah, I, I guess just backtracking slightly there in terms of education history, um, studying computer science and management at Loughborough and then doing my MBA um, at the University of Wales. I guess I've always had that thought around being a generalist in a very specialist environment. Um, just super competitive, yeah? Like, like working in sport, some of the more um, illustrious roles. I mean, they're, they're highly competitive in terms of um, the recruitment process for them. So I did, without having a true understanding of the system, I always thought, well, develop a set of skills that can be transferable, that are kind of focused on problem solving, that you can adapt, prepare, um, be aware of change and the need for change around you and build confidence in those spaces and developing leadership skills. I thought that would, on the, I guess at, at its forefront, you think oh, I'm not developing the right skills because it's not specific enough. But then I guess when you get some experience on top of the educational background that I come from, I think it puts you in a fairly strong position um, to be able to at least articulate what you can bring to the table, which comes from very diverse background and experience as opposed to just a sporting one. Most people studying for the first time, or at least at sort of that age, don't, might not necessarily have that foresight. Where did you get that foresight? Did somebody, you know, sort of a mentor pull you in at one point and say that that would be a, a good thing to consider? I, th I think it was likely um, like my, my family group, particularly my, my dad and, and my uncle. Um, my father, like no qualifications, but worked his way up in, in a telecommunication company. And I guess just observing kind of, how he went about it, how hard he was working, how hard he had to prepare for um, some fairly simple things that we would look at now. I think when I reflect on that, that, that gave me this impetus to look at kind of leadership and business management and business administration to get that more general skill set. Uh, but then my uncle was a project manager in the oil and gas industry. Spent a lot of time with him, did, did most of my kind of school work-based experience with him. Um, and, and again, I, I wouldn't have realized this at the time, but when you reflect on it, like those set of skills to manage a significant project, there was something that like really associated with obviously me and how I wanted to operate in my professional career that kind of led me down that route of that generalism of leadership, management, understanding finances, understanding parts of HR, all those skills you, you kind of build as part of that MBA qualification. Uh, I was just reflecting on what you're saying there and sort of, you know, articulating a road less traveled mindset, but sort of reflecting on um, the culture within sport at the moment, or oh, I would just say generally, probably a comment on the human condition more than anything is, is the want for the silver bullet. You know, you know, I, I want to get the sports science degree, get the master's in blah, blah, blah. And then I work at the club and then I want to be a performance director before 30 or, you know, before 35. Like, just give me what I want straight away. And not often when, you know, unfortunately in the sport world, not often does that actually happen. Um, but to, and this is more so a commentary from other people that I've interviewed, not necessarily my own views, but they would observe that, the, the necessary skills or experience hasn't been had or they haven't been achieved by, you know, by the people that might have gotten to those roles at, a, at, a, at an earlier age. And um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on people maybe rushing to that end goal 
um, and, and, and trying to maybe, it, whether it be specialising quickly or, you know, you, know, you can't, you can't generalize quickly, but maybe specializing quickly and wanting to get to that goal super quick. What's your take on that? I, I sort of assume from what you've said before that that would be sort of the furthest thing from your mind and you would want to be patient. Um, but what, what's your take on people that sort of, yeah, just trying to rush and get to where they want to get to without sort of maybe earning the right stripes or getting the right experiences? Yeah, I, I mean, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because obviously, a lot of our career opportunities are determined by the availability of roles um, and, you know, your ability to work through a recruitment process. So, you know, if, if opportunities arrive sooner than what you think you're ready for, I think you should still take them. You know, there's, mm. a, there's learning on the job in any space, isn't it? Um, and I guess none of us would, you know, that those of us that are curious enough have, a little bit of humility we, we probably think we're never ready anyway <laughs> That's uh, I think, but I, I feel like it's based around like what is it you want to achieve long term like I'm quite goal driven um and I know I, I know you've mentioned previously around kind of personal philosophies and on, on on your podcast and I was trying to think what mine actually is and I think there's so many components of it, but but there's something I keep coming back to, and it's around sort of being very deliberate with what I do and when I do it. And I, you know, I, I class myself as hugely fortunate in terms of the the world I live in, the social connections I've got, the, the career I've got, and the opportunities that that present themselves. And I, I'm super grateful for that. But with that comes an opportunity to almost shape the lifestyle you want for yourself and your family. Um, and that deliberacy around, you know, some, something like a performance director or leading a team, leading a sport, leading a, creating a culture, creating an environment or being part of that. Like I've wanted that for a long time now. I'm 36, but like that's always been the back of my, well, not always, but it's been in the back of my mind since like, maybe 22, 23. So having that clear longer term goal has really shaped the opportunities that I've seeked. Um, and I think so with the, in comparison to like a specialist, say a, a physiologist for argument's sake, like we still need these specialists. Mm. Um, you know, a, a high performing environment in sport or, or anywhere in, in, in the PLC, world it's an amalgamation of generalists and specialists isn't it and ultimately over time a generalist might start to specialize in a particular area and likewise a specialist might develop a more general set of skills depending on the opportunities that that present themselves but kind of coming back to your question I think it's taking that time to really like deeply reflect um, on what it is you want from the career you're trying to forge? I, I couldn't have scripted a better answer than that. I think that's, <laughs> that's a really, really good answer. Um, you spoke about yourself and how you might, you are quite goal orientated and deliberate. And you also mentioned sort of the opportunistic nature of this industry at times. Have those two elements or, or, or qualities, qualities of yourself and then, a, and then a quality of the industry ever conflicted? Yeah, I think so. Um, like, is, it create, is it a healthy conflict, would you say, or has it been yeah. challenging to navigate through? I think that then comes back to like your, your peers, your social circle, your, your mentors, your friendship group that, that you can kind of have good honest conversations with so so I, I guess like a really good example is like like here in Wales um how we've got to meet in in terms of us rolling out smarter base nationally like I, I find that like an amazing opportunity for us and when I say us I mean sport Wales and and the governing bodies and our partners to work collaboratively to develop kind of better practices or improved practices for athlete development um but that's going to take a long time 
um, in terms of that that system change that that we're seeking, um, and it's changed from a good place. We, it, it's it's a it's a system evolving and embedding and integrating technology to help us understand that. But then I guess the conflict of that is there's always opportunities presenting themselves elsewhere, um, particularly after an Olympic Games. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that that tends to be when a lot of um, federations bodies have a have a change in in approach strategy clear out so so opportunities present themselves so I think it's always there's always some form of tension or conflict there but again like for me it's that well that's where I want to get to so what would be a how could I build that appropriate skill set whilst contributing to the current role I'm in is it to see through some of this system change or would it be to go elsewhere and seek a different opportunity? Um, and, and, you know, being a proud, a proud Welshman, uh, I mean, at the heart of all of this is just a sports fan. Um, and I feel like managing that, that tension is important, but just relating it back to what you're currently doing, I guess the satisfaction of that, and then where you want to get to longer term. Earlier, we were talking about how you've combined your passion of, of golf and, and put that into sort of your professional career and professional endeavours. Um, endurance sport, obviously, is something that's very close to your heart as well from a personal point of view, and you've managed to spin that off into um, the, the organisation that you sort of head up and co-found, uh, RSA. Talk, me a little bit, talk to me a little bit more about that uh, and what was the, the impetus of that? What got you, what made you go, okay, you know, because it's quite entrepreneurial um you know to 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 start that and if those that want to check out the website you can go through daniel's linkedin and and get onto the rsa website it's a very class website looks you know very very well put together it's uh i guess comparatively speaking i don't want to name names but you know people in the industry that have their own uh uh, coaching services might not put as much effort into the you know sort of the the look and feel and the marketing and the website as as you have so very complimentary of the website you've got there Uh, it's class um, but what took me through sort of the, the, the thought process around RSA, was that just another endeavor of cool, I've got something that I personally love and I want to, I want to make a professional living out of it. Yeah, I, I guess it, it comes back to, um, you know, that period in your life where you, you know, that you're not going to make it in your sporting endeavor, but you need something to fill that gap. Um, so like transition out of golf um sort of competing nationally traveling around the globe only at an amateur level um but it it encompassed a lot of my time and energy but i loved it i I love competing um for me kind of competition is a is the fabric of the sporting system um and i didn't want to just be i don't know i might sound like a bit of an arsehole here but i didn't just want to be like a golf club member who didn't have time to practice, played on the weekend and started going backwards and like standing on that tee and thinking, oh, a couple of years ago, I could have hit this shot, but now I can't hit it because yeah. I'm not, I'm not practicing. I'm not training around it. So I, I kind of, I had time and I didn't want to go down this route of the career being all encompassing at this stage of my life. Um, so a couple of my friends had done Ironman Wales being from down that way. Um, and I just thought that sounded pretty cool. I, I always wanted to get a road bike. Um, so it was like this excuse to start triathlon. Um, and in many ways, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to overgeneralize this, but like endurance sports, it's a little bit simpler to improve in comparison to like a skill-based sport. Um, so quite quickly, you know, putting the time, and energy and effort from golf into triathlon, you become quite fit, start getting into the kind of business end of sort of local races and, and things like that. And I, I just loved it. I love training. I love the people, love the mentality of, of kind of striving to achieve that goal once or twice a year. Um, and I guess didn't have like hugely positive coaching experiences in terms of the coaches I engaged with early. Um, early in that sort of transition to triathlon Um, and then over time kind of that that knowledge that experience around athlete development understanding of the 
I guess a broader understanding of kind of the physiology, strength and conditioning, all the ologies that underpin performance. Um, I thought, well, why don't we, why don't we, we create something similar to what is typically only available for elite professional performance athletes? Why don't we offer a similar service to age group athletes? Because ultimately, you know, finishing fifth in your age group at Ironman Barcelona, that, that's somebody Olympics, isn't it? But for them, that's their comparison. So it shouldn't be that they don't have the opportunity to engage with a team of coaches, practitioners. If that is available, then maybe they can get the best out of themselves. So it's kind of like a bit of a side hustle running alongside my role as a performance advisor. Um, but again, it comes back to that bit of being like a sportsman and a fan, like working in, I guess, more administrative roles in sport could maybe lose that, the kind of romantic side of it, the fan side of it, the, the passion side of it. So I've, I've always wanted to keep my hand in a couple of different pies, whether it be competing, whether it be coaching alongside the sort of administrative role. As you were chatting, I was thinking about you know, the, my next question around sort of what would be more, you know, if one thing took off or the other thing took off, what would be the, what would be your ultimate decision? Um, it, it strikes me though that you're the kind of person that you know yourself and you know that you need these certain satisfactions in your life. You know, obviously that uh, a, a role at uh, Sport Wales is serving one element that's going to make, make you feel whole and complete and, and then the other element of coaching and being on the ground and that romantic side of sport is going to make you feel whole and complete am I right in, in in assuming that you know if you ever were sort of given that fork in the road choice I don't see you as the type of person that would take one over the other you'd find a way to continue to do both and keep that balance in your life I think so I think that balance is key um and like you know, my goal is called, we call it RAS. So, so RAS is, um, translates to race in Welsh, but it's also an acronym of race, achieve, strive. Um, and what that is, is kind of this journey that an athlete goes on um, as you become more self-aware, more, more mature. And like a lot of us, we start out because we like racing, competing, but then actually it becomes a lot bigger than that. Um, and kind of the, the power and the value of sport and achieving and continuing to strive um, is, is more encompassing than just racing. Um, so that's kind of where the brand has come from. Um, but I, what I want to do with RAS is, is just take on more coaches. So, so, so it's less like us having a kind of philosophy, a methodology, a set of principles of what we do, why we do it, who we connect with bringing that endurance community together, which is typically, there's a lot in that space that is just delivering training programs online. Like everybody we coach is local to us. So we get them together at least once a month um, to actually connect, build that community. And I think that's where I want to go with it. More coaches, more athletes, um, but scale doesn't then come at a cost of my time. Um, we scale through additional coaches um, and then you know I can maintain the other side of the career um, in organizations such as sport world so I think the balance and kind of what I learn from coaching I can bring into my performance advisor role and likewise what I learn in the role of a performance advisor I can kind of bring into my role as a coach so there's something quite symbiotic there which I think links and connects quite nicely yeah, it's great. Like I was saying before, they seem very complementary and, and they balance, they seem to balance, uh, not only balance you out individually, because you, you know, just speaking about your own personal needs, about what you need to feel satisfied and whole. But yeah, like you mentioned, there, there are complementary features to both roles that service each other. We were speaking before about mentors and obviously the, the last, you know, 30 minutes or so speaking about your journey. For anybody starting their own journey in the sports science industry, whether that be somebody, you know, maybe 17 years old, coming into it very, very fresh and about to start studying, or somebody just joining it from a different career, you know, coming in from a different um, part of life, maybe joining it in their 30s or 40s, what would be your advice to those individuals coming into our wonderful industry? 
That's a good question. I guess stay curious. It's, it's very easy to be influenced by, I guess, those with the most powerful voice in a room. Um, but actually, when you come into a sports performance environment, there's so many people in that space with such a, I guess, diverse range of experiences, um, knowledge, understanding, educational background. Um, they like take the time to like build relationships with with the masses. Um, and then also kind of find your own way. Because I do feel like one of the things around the high performance system in particular, like there's so much imitation, isn't it? There's so much best practice. There's so much repetition that, that you can just become one of these cogs in a system that um, I guess maybe that isn't given the prestige or value needed. Um, so it's that network relationships but also like that deep reflection around you who you are what you want to achieve lot short term long term and understanding how you get there and I guess those people within the system you can learn from them but also ask them for help um, because it is a system based on passion isn't it like not not many people do it for the financial reward or, or, or the pension <laughs> at, at the end of it. Most people do it because they just love sport, whether that's human performance, competition, whatever that might be, there'll be something underpinning that passion. And once you, once you understand that, it's a great space to work in and, and kind of live in. Daniel, it's been fantastic to talk to you. I'm sure people watching there is something for everybody um, through your range of philosophies and as a part of your journey as well. If those that are watching and enjoyed this and want to watch more, you can click here to subscribe or you can watch our previous interview up here. For Daniel, I'm James. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day.